Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is uh, an event uh, that is part of the FT Online, uh, an event of the Faculty of Technology as part of the of the getting back process, getting back to the activities process uh, of the Faculty of Technology of UNB. And we here would like to present uh, uh, one uh, interesting case of academic internationalization led by students from junior enterprises. And this case is powered by Grupo Gestão, is a case that uh, Grupo Gestão, uh, which is the junior enterprise of production engineering, uh, uh, started. So, uh, first of all, I would like to give the virtual floor to our director of the Faculty of Technology, Marcio Muniz, uh, to say, so, say some words. He participates uh, since the beginning of the process, so uh, that's really good to have him here. Hi, everybody. Good morning, maybe good afternoon or maybe good night for some. Nice to, to find so many young people together from different countries. Um, happy to find we are in, in good shape and wish nothing bad has happened to your dear ones, um, friends and relatives. I would also like to assure you that we are all doing well in Brazil, despite having a somewhat crazy and careless president, as you know, but Brazil continues shiny, happy and optimistic that we will all get out of this much stronger than we are at the moment. I'd like to thank our international partners, huh? uh, starting with the colleagues from other uh, universities and institutions abroad, to Jens that we already have meet, met sometimes in Brazil, hope meeting sometime in Denmark as well. Uh, Natasha, I don't know if she's there, from yeah, uh, from Saxon University University in the Netherlands and Khaled from Tunisia. I've been to Tunisia a few times, wonderful country. I'd like to congratulate our professors um, from our Department of uh, Production Engineering, João Melo, Simone, Paulo Celso, Marcia, I don't know if she's there, uh, and also our, our local partners in the Central Bank of Brazil, the International uh, Relations Department of our university. And most of all, I'd like to congratulate the real stars of this meeting, the students, our students in Group Gestão, and the students from all other universities all over the world. Um, I want to stress the role of students now in this post-pandemia world. Uh, it's time that we will be starting non-presential classes and they have to take control in their learning process. And this is something that this group has worked together, uh, trying to experiment new methodology methodologies active methodologies which is in the in the core of um, the start of this uh, cooperation and most of all to stress the relevance of the theme uh, of this cooperation the, the focus on sustainability and social inclusion so i'm, ha I'm happy for meeting you we all i'm sure that it will be a great success and wish you all a nice meeting and I uh, hope that this will ensure the continuation and strengthening and broadening of our uh, international relations. Good luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Marcio. Uh, it's uh, really yeah. good to, to like hear that words from you. Uh, it's uh, our great effort uh, together with the partnership with, with, with the professors, which is fundamental. And right now, I'd like uh, to start by this point uh, to give in the virtual floor 
to our professors that uh, uh, allowed the, all this partnership, uh, the Brazilian professors that allowed all this partnership uh, to present themselves and to talk a little bit about uh, how, how it is and uh, the, their part, their role in the entire partnership. So I'll start with uh, Professor João Mello. Professor João Melo, are you there? I, I, I actually can't mm -hmm. see Professor João Melo here, so... So, let me see. I think I'm here. Okay. <laughs> you are here, yeah. Professor. <laughs> yeah. Good morning to you all. Uh, it was interesting because uh, I, we, we treated that Mateus was going to present in this session would be like a, a historical thing. And then what I felt is that uh, I, I had something that is prehistorical thing. Uh, we forgot that uh, this all the, the, this whole thing started, and then just two persons that are here, uh, me and Jens, it started in Bogota in 2017. Uh, we were there in a meeting. We were part of a, we are in the meeting, the meeting I was there because we wrote a, a chapter on, on a PBL experience in Brazil. And then uh, I, I met Mona, that unfortunately he's not here and she's not in this meeting. Uh, and Mona presented me a young guy that used to be really active in, in international matters. And then we, I don't know if Jens remember, we had a lunch in the university there in, in, in Bogota in 2017. And then we I met again. very well. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and this is the prehistorical thing, okay? And then we had something, a meeting in, in, in March 2018, and everything started formally. But this part is, I, I was just supposed to say, this prehistorical part, okay? So I pass now for the other professors. Thank you. Uh, yes, perfect. The really, really nice uh, story. Professor Paulo Celso. Yes, thank you. Can you listen to me? Yes, we can hear yes. you. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. It's a great meeting. And uh, we are working together since uh, two, three years ago. We started on the Open Dark of Brazil about two days or two years ago. And I'm very happy to see so many faces discussing this issue and thinking new ways to improve this, this, this management of the subways in Brazil and the inclusion of the speakers. Thank you so much, to Okay, and let's have a, a great meeting. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Professor Simone? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm Professor Simone. I work at Production Engineer Department of the University of Brasilia. I love research about active learning methodologies. I am the creator platform that evaluates the learning process of active methodology called PUMA. I think that the use of active learning in education is very important and motivates students to learn. I'm very happy about the international partnership with Denmark and Tunisia because it's a great experience for our students. <clears throat> develop many competences like English language communication, scientific article, waiting English, leadership and management. Paid <coughs> in three projects that now will be presented to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, now, Professor Gianni. Hello, hello everyone. I'm a professor in the Mechanical Engineer Department, uh, Faculty of Technology, 
in the mechanical engineer course, I work in the area of mechanical systems, and I also uh, I I'm part of the post-graduation program in design. Well, after the EPIC event held in February, we returned to Brazil to form teams to support and continue the projects. However, with the coronavirus pandemic, we had only the first week of classes, and the university calendar was suspended and classes were paralyzed. Well, the students from Netherlands contacted us seek, uh, to seek information about the plastic waste. And uh, the plastic waste discarded in water here in Brazil. And then, then I thought, mm, we have a problem. We don't have students to work. So I decided to contact some colleagues to help me gather as many as people as we could to develop two extensive projects. And later, I, we will talk about these projects. I'm very happy with these projects and with this event. And thank you very much. OK, perfect, Professor. Yeah, I, I know that wasn't planned, but uh, I will I will give the floor as well uh, for uh, uh, as we have everyone here uh, for Jens, uh, Haled, and Natasha. Starting for starting by Jens. Jens, would you uh, present yourself very quickly? Uh, like, uh, well, uh, yep. And we we didn't plan that, but I think it's relevant to do it. <laughs> How much time do I have? Okay, so uh, uh, very quick, just so just, is, uh, just to present, uh, you you have you you have your specific mo moment after all. Yeah, to be honest, I think I would do it short. Uh, me a person. I'm associate professor at Albany University, working mainly in cybersecurity, but I've been doing as well a lot of work on project and problem-based learning, uh, and together with great colleagues. Uh, from Brasilia, from Denmark, from the Netherlands. Uh, we have uh, done great things and created cool student projects, but it's very much due to all the good colleagues doing a lot of work and, may, and, and especially due to the students being so active and motivated uh, that this has all been possible to do. So it's great to be here among friends. I'm looking very much forward to the seminar. Thank you very much, Jens. Uh, Haled. Yeah, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, so this is uh, Khaled Junior uh, Hafaid. I'm a professor, I'm a doctor in, I have a PG in computer security and uh, now I teach in um, computer security and also web development in uh, a school called uh, Esprit, uh, private school of engineering, which is located in Tunisia. And um, yeah, so we have been uh, working together uh, with Professor Joao and uh, with some members, uh, Professor Simoni too, Matthias and some other students, uh, El Veraldo and others, different projects. So uh, uh, we have been uh, involved in three projects so far. So we started collaborating together in June. So less than 11 months, uh, less just a year exactly. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to uh, to this partnership, and uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much, Haled, uh, and also Natasha. Yes, thank you, Mateus. To bon dia a todos. It, it's really nice to be here, and it's a very special occasion because there are several worlds coming together for me. I work at Saxon University uh, of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. Uh, and I'm a researcher on engineering education at the University of Twente in the Netherlands. But in a previous life, I used to be a researcher on um, engineering education in Portugal uh, and um, did uh, teacher training also at uh, UniB uh, like 100 years ago uh, and met um, uh, Professor Jean Melo and Professor Simone and Professor Diane. Uh, and now this is all coming together in uh, in one seminar, so it's a, it's a really nice uh, occasion. And uh, thank you very much, Matthäus, for organizing this. 
Hi, thank you, Natasha. That's uh, a big pleasure. Big pleasure. And also, uh, we would like to uh, we would like Professor Ana Flavia to say some words. Uh, Professor Ana Flavia, are you there? Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, absolutely. Oh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Matthias and Professor João, for inviting me. Hello, Jens. And so I'm here and ready to discuss with you. So thanks so much for the invitation. And I teach international relations in the University of Brasilia. And uh, I think we can contribute to discussing why this link between local and global um, views are important now. Thank you. Perfect, Professor. Thank you very much. So uh, I think we have we had all, all our professors uh, involved uh, in the partnership mainly uh, presented. And now uh, we can uh, follow with our our schedule here. First of all, uh, I'm going to make a quick contextualization here. Uh, uh, can you can you see my screen already? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, so, we can. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. So our subject today is uh, like we're going to be presenting some projects that we've been uh, developing together, but also we would like to address the subject itself of the partnerships and uh, how we are connecting people from different cultures uh, and with a framework based on the junior enterprise of production engineering. Uh, so this is we can des describe as the academic internationalization led by students from junior enterprise. It's a case. And to talk about it, it's interesting to talk about the origins of it. Everything started when Grupo Gestão in 2018 uh, was elected uh, the second best junior enterprise in Brazil among more than 1,000 junior enterprises. It was really good for us. We actually had the clear thinking that we were successful in business. But then other things came to our mind, like how can we be, give all this back to the universities? We, we are like uh, the second best junior enterprise in the country. How can we do more? How could we impact even more people? We understood from that time that that would have something to do with the, with the uh, sustainable development goals. But actually, we were uh, more like full of doubts than with certainties. Uh, then uh, things started to connect a little and then actually after that everything connected. Uh, there was an opportunity which was the PIE event here in Brasilia, in the University of Brasilia, uh, which is an event of, for engineering education, so uh, uh, an event uh, that approaches this theme. And Grupo Gestão uh, was like uh, heavily in the staff organization and with all with this connection to the the event professor João Mello uh, said to Grupo Gestão Grupo Gestão I know what you are thinking and I need to introduce you to the Danish professors because there is potential in that and when the Danish professors arrived we actually got connected we made several meetings with the Danish professors uh, to understand their, their perspectives, uh, see what we could do together. And actually, Professor Jomelo was really right. Oh, I have to uh, welcome Sofia here because she was also in this meeting. She is not in this picture, but she was in this meeting. And we discussed it a lot uh, more than like, we had a lot of meetings parallel with the PIE. And we found out that we all had a focus on sustainability. And that was really good. So then after uh, a lot of discussions, after how can we uh, turn into something concrete, what we are thinking, we decided, we made a decision. 
we decided that in August 2018, we would bring students from Denmark to Brazil to work together on developing solutions focused on the 2030 agenda. And to do that, to afford doing that, uh, Grupo Gestão, the junior enterprise of production engineering, guaranteed host families to the Danish students, so they wouldn't have to pay hotels, and also uh, a financial help to complete the budget of Danish students with funding problems. That wouldn't have been possible with our great uh, president, Sophia, and also our great, at the time, uh, our, uh, we can say, the financial director uh, of Grupo Gestão. So they bought the cause and, and allowed everything to happen. They made, they made it viable. So we are ready to make a, an event 100% focused on sustainability. And that's what we did. The Global Student SD Challenge was born then in August 2018. The Danish guys came here, the Danish professors came here, and also we had, as we can see here, uh, a very special partnership as well of the Chilean students. So we received them in our homes. I, for example, in this first event, had two, uh, two guys uh, in my house, and it was really good. We had our office with the Danish guys and the Chilean guys working on the sustainability projects. And at the end of the week, it was very clear that we were in the right path. And we had made also like great partnerships. So everything was starting to, to grow uh, based on our uh, partnership. We even, after, after the event, went to the Professor João Melo's birthday, which was also the birthday of one of the Danish guys, just a curiosity. <laughs> so that was really good. Uh, and the relationship was and is uh, amazing. And like this one, we had other two. So we had we had three events in Brazil. And every event we uh, received the Danish, the Danish guys here and the international guys here. And in the semester, we would uh, work in the project generated in the event. In February 2019, we, uh, we started to focus uh, on waste, in the waste theme. We took the Danish guys and the international guys to the dump site, to the Lichon de Estructural, and showed them the reality. We went to the, to the waste pickers facilities, uh, uh, we talked to them and it was really, really good. By then, we decided that waste would be our, our focus and especially waste pickers. And on, on July, we even brought some waste pickers to the Faculty of Technology to discuss how could we improve their uh, daily lives. And then we, it was very clear, we made uh, uh, a list, yeah, we, we, we decided some projects that would be interesting to do on this theme, and we had decided that waste would be our focus. And the next event wouldn't be in Brazil. Actually, it would be in Germany. We were invited to participate in the EPIC project, uh, led especially by Pro Professor Jens and Natasha, and also funded by the European Union. Grupo Gestão was invited as, a, uh, as an enterprise uh, because it, uh, it's, a, it's an event for European universities, but Grupo Gestão as an enterprise could join. And we sent 15 students as representatives. And this is the pictures uh, we had made our event in parallel, like together, a uh, fusion of our SDG challenge with the EPIC event. It was really good. We made a lot of friends and also we uh, could actually have the biggest of the results, which was the projects. So we have now our projects very well defined because of EPIC and uh, because of this version of SDG that uh, happened in Germany. We have the river waste recovery which is focused on 
the problem of plastics in our uh, in our water. So rivers, lakes, the sea. We have we have this this is a, a global problem in, in that requires local action and also global coordination. So uh, it's a real problem in the theme of waste, and it's our theme. We we would definitely face this challenge. Also, IoT in selective collection because we need to improve selective collection. The waste pickers suffer a lot from the uh, failures of in selective collection. And also, we can optimize the routes and have less CO2 in the atmosphere. So, uh, and also, our final project uh, of this uh, three generated in EPIC is the mobile education for waste pickers. Actually, this project started two thousand uh, two, two, two years ago, uh, in 2018, and then it was evolving and get, got to this, like the waste pickers, they need to have some knowledge how to uh, get like other options in life. Uh, not only how to manage uh, money, but part of the financial education is uh, how can I uh, find, find ways to uh, earn more money? That's it. So the financial education for waste pickers is a very important project generated uh, here, we're going to have also in this event, the central bank that is uh, present here, uh, which will all be a part, great partner in this uh, project. So it's a key thing. Having this, uh, we, we, we now can see that uh, which countries were involved. So we had, we had Brazil, Norway, the Netherlands, Turkey, uh, and of course, our great partners, Denmark. And in addition to these three projects, in parallel, uh, in, the, in the last semester, we developed a, a also really, really, really great partnership with Tunisia. Uh, the University of Brasilia was trying to, uh, the, was funding the development of two softwares uh, here proposed by the production engineering, very interesting uh, and important softwares. Uh, but we lost the funds because uh, the federal gov government cut it, cut. So, but the Tunisian guys would help a lot uh, getting into this battle and helping us develop. So all this project, the EPIC project and the Tunisian project will be presented today. But we can't just talk about it, we can't start without letting uh, like uh, the high the higher representatives of Group Gestão, uh, which made uh, all this possible to have like to say some words. So uh, we're going to have here Lucas Cavalcanti, which is the uh, current present president of Group Gestão, who, uh, who sent uh, the, the 15 representatives to Germany earlier this year, it was amazing. And of course, our great last, uh, uh, last presidents, uh, Sofia Garcia and Vitoria Penteado, who were responsible for, in the case of uh, Sofia, you know, both of them, since the beginning, they uh, helped with the foundation of this and uh, keeping it alive. So I uh really thank them and i will give the floor right now to them so i start with sofia garcia which was uh uh the president the, the president of group gestão back in 2018 when all this internationalization started so sofia uh, uh we are really uh like looking forward to hear some words from you about this <laughs> Hi everyone, good morning for all in Brazil or good afternoon. Uh, thanks Mateus for this amazing introduction. I'm really happy to see how things uh, ran in all these two years, right? Because this uh, partnership and this conversation started there like in 2018, right? With uh, João Melo and Jens and Mona, right? Uh, Professor. Uh, Juan Melo came to me when I was the president of Grupo Gestão in 2018 and 
say, Sophia, we need to change how students uh, understand the word. We need to make this partnership with people around the world. And we are going to do this with Grupo Gestão and Denmark students and uh, people from uh, Germany. And how, how do you think about this? And I was like, really? How are we going to do this? And we started having some uh, meetings and conversations. And uh, those, how many students, uh, Mateus, came in 2018? In the first version, 11 in the first, uh, students. 11 students from Denmark and Germany also. And uh, they came and we, uh, as uh, the junior enterprise, we gave them some um, founding so we can we could support the uh, the experience and the opportunity right but uh, i think this was an amazing opportunity to have this connection with the agenda uh, 2030 right and with this uh, all sustainable goals because um, as we can see students from europe or united states they have this conversation about those uh, subtopics and the subjects really often and here in Brazil, unfortunately, uh, we don't have this conversations so often. So it was an amazing experience and opportunity to have this connection uh, with uh, those subjects and to have this connection with uh, different students from all over the world, right? So uh, last year I was living in Germany and when I came um, to back when I came back to Brazil, uh, Lucas, uh, the currently president of uh, Grupo de Santos, said, oh, we are sending 15 uh, students to Germany to uh, do uh, the SDG challenge in Germany. And I was like, what? How this went so fast? Like in 2018, we were, okay, come, uh, we can do this, we can uh, manage that. And now we are sending like people to Germany to talk about sustainable goals and to have this relationship with uh, selective um, and waste uh, subjects. And this uh, opportunity last this year, actually in the beginning to go to Germany was amazing, I think, because in Germany especially, they uh, solve the selection of the waste really uh, in a really good way. And here in Brazil, we don't have this. So for example, I know that in Germany, if you don't select and you don't uh, put the right waste in the right time, your rent, for example, will uh, raise. And here in Brazil, we need to have this conscious and we need to uh, understand that we need to do our part. So those kind of partnership I think uh, it's amazing to show the students as uh, engineers and as uh, members of this junior enterprise uh, how we can change not just our um, scenario and our situation here in Brasilia or in Brazil, but we can also help and being helped uh, from uh, with uh, other students from all over the world, right? So in my okay. perception, those uh, partnership was a, a perfect match and a really great opportunity to not just uh, junior enterprise group system, but for all over uh, university, UNB and technology faculty. So we need to continue and uh, we have really good advantage to have this partnership with all over uh, this universities from all over the world. And I'm really happy that we can continue and we are watching in 2020 now. Uh, this partnership continues and probably 2021, right? So count on me because I'm really happy to be part of all of this. Thank you very Hi much. Hi guys. My yeah, name is Victoria. Yeah. And I had the pleasure to not only work with Sofia in 2018 and be her partner in the beginning of this project of this idea, but also to continue her amazing work in 2019. And what I think was the, the big point of our year uh, last year was that we were able to continue the project and extend the project and not only the project, but the relation with uh, the foreign students and the professors um, outside because I think this was the main point 
so that we could actually send our Brazilian students uh, to Germany uh, this year. And not only that, but uh, since uh, the tendency right now is for companies and enterprises to be more involved uh, with the sustainable development goals from UN and uh, social techs are coming up and this is uh, starting to become a big trend right now in the market. We see Grupo Gestão as a junior enterprise, uh, as a start point for the students to actually be able to be um, future professionals and, you know, um, and to act in their markets and their future careers. There's as start points to disseminate, you know, the values and the the importance of the uh, the importance to look uh, to this development uh, sustainable development goals and, and bring that to the environment that they are going to act in in the future. So I think this uh, bringing this consci consciousness to to the students and also extending the relationship. Uh, with other countries and, you know, maintaining the relationship we had built in 2018 was the main point so that we could uh, extend and bring more um, more tangible results to the project that were, you know, the projects that were um, I, uh, initially, you know, um, uh, developed in 2018. So for us, it was a pleasure not only to give financial support in 2018, but extend the relationship in 2018 so that Lucas was able to do an amazing work uh, to send the students in 2020 and give them an opportunity to uh, develop and finish the work they began uh, two years ago. So hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be here and meet you all. As Mateus already introduced me, I'm Lucas Cavalcanti, the current president of Grupo Gestão. First of all, I would like to reinforce that we are very honored with this international partnership and that we were very happy to send uh, all of us representatives left to Germany and the opportunity to interact with the EPIC project. The results uh, was like they are still going on, but we are very, we are very thankful and happy by that, enjoyed a lot. And I can assure you all that Grupo Gestão will keep investing our efforts in the partnership and all the purpose of the 2030 agenda. And also because the Brazil Junior, the conference of the all the junior prize in Brazil, they really are focused on that also. So all of our consulting projects have some kind of relationship with that. So we are very connected. And I would also, also like to thank the Faculty of Technology and the Department of Production Engineering to enable all of this opportunity for us. We really appreciate that. Um, and well, uh, that's about it for now. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Lucas. And thank you very much, all of the three. It was uh, really good. And uh, you know, and definitely without your support, that wouldn't be possible at all. So thank you. And now, after having done that, we can start presenting our project. We can start presenting our project. So uh, we have we have like projects that are in progress. We have uh, teams that uh, have like already done uh, this sprint complete, and uh, we we are going to contemplate their, their work right now. So I will start uh, inviting. Uh, we had a little bit, uh, a small change here, uh, so we're going to start with the IoT team uh, of from Brazil. Because, uh, yep, that's it. So, Luisa, you can you can uh, lead it there. I will turn you as the the presenter here. I will give you the power to to present, and you will start it. <laughs> Right. Okay. Just one second, and yes. Okay. Just a second. All right. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. So, hi everyone. Um, we are the group that work on the project of IoT in Selective Waste Collection. My name is Luisa. And my name is Gabriel. 
And in our group, we also have Daniel, Julia, Lorena, John Haynes, Christian, Miko, uh, Robert, and Mustafa. And in that project, our challenge was to improve the waste collection with Internet of Things. But what is Internet of Things? It's a digital interconnection between objects and Internet that provides data. And to make that happen, we work with the company Green. Yeah, in our project, we were able to work with Green Ambiental. That is the uh, the company that we work with solutions with environmental technologies, and they are specialized in glass recycling. Uh, we we were way we were able to work with the glass waste here in federal districts. They had uh, around 115 collection points and uh, they, they work and help uh, around 82 cooperatives and associations uh, of waste pickers. And we, we worked with the glass recycling because it's a little bit easier to work with uh, solid contents and solid waste because we we were about to measure their wave, their volume in the containers, and we will talk a little bit after. Yeah, and the first part of the project we were we tried to understand the pain that we could solve and we found that the logistical part of the process of the collection was the the best one because they didn't know actually they don't know today uh, whether the containers are full or are empty and this way they don't know uh, which way to cover during the collection and because of that they take unnecessary roads they lost resources and they emit more polluting gases than the necessary and in order, in order to solve this we are we have the solution here yeah and the solution of our milestones on the project was to make a sensor to measure the wave the high of the waste on the containers inside the containers uh, made a system to organize the database and to to route uh, the best optimized uh, route map to pick this waste on the containers here in brasilia and made a, a dashboard about this data to to make the the database uh, the best visualized option for them. Yeah, and here we have some photos. Uh, this sensor is one of the sensors the Danish team did. And as Gabriel said, it will be able to measure the weight and provide the data that Green will use to, to, to have the route optimization, the route maps, and the dashboard that will provide all those information. This page is just one of the pages that will be on the dashboard. And with the project, we will be able to have a bunch of impact. Here's our uh, one of those. Uh, the first of them is the route optimization because of the system we're giving it to them. We, they will be able uh, with this route optimization to save resources, to emit less gases, and as the process will run faster, they in the future will be able to recycle more or less to provide more income for the waste makers. And with all of those data uh, into a platform, they will have a better decision making. And it was a really nice experience. Yeah, our experience uh, was based on the event that we were we were able to to go on Germany and like the best experiences that we had uh, 
between this semester we we were able to improve our communication with the team and the stakeholders uh, especially on the slack channel that we have uh, in video conferences uh, we we had about like i think every week on the semester we had the these video conferences to to make the the communication with the guys and to integrate the work of people from different countries that was uh, Danish guys, uh, Mustafa Kemal from Turkey, and our team of Brazil too. Yeah, and those things were predicted, but coronavirus weren't, so we had to deal with this to talk to Green to work. Uh, for example, in Denmark, they had to do a sensor, so. Uh, but they couldn't go to the university, so it was a challenge. They had to do it later, but it worked. It was really nice, and the project is uh, can have a lot of impact. We hope that we can scale it to more containers because this project was just the beginning. We have just uh, a little, just a few sensors, but as we can scale this we can have an enormous impact so we're really grateful for this and yeah that's our and that's our project. yeah and uh just one thing at the time now we just uh we were able to finish our project uh but we weren't able due to the coronavirus situation here in brazil to to give them the the sensors that the danish guys just made it because the sensors aren't here in Brazil uh, by the time. But uh, we hope after this coronavirus situation, we are able to give them all our projects and to make this deliver for them and make this project happen here in Brazil. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bernardes. Thank you, Luisa. It, it was really good to, to, to see the presentation. Uh, and actually, I would like to give the floor right now to the Danish guys with uh, a little bit more technical perspective. Five minutes as well. Uh, yeah, I think uh, just for now, we'll uh, maybe just talk about the, experience, the experiences with the international communication and all of that stuff because we also have uh, 15 minutes later on. I think we'll uh, pass the project there if that's okay. Perfect. That's okay. That's really good. That's really good. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, like uh, just like we said, we had a. I think I at least me. I had a very great experience with uh, with how the communication was. It was uh, great to to get out of the normal space of the university and, and do something that actually has an impact. Um, also, I've been speaking with a lot of people uh, working in, uh, in the industry on a daily basis that this is uh, this was a very great opportunity to to experience how international collaborations work in, in the real industry. Uh, so that's that's basically what I think has been very great for uh, for us to be a part of, and I hope we're, that a lot of more stu students from Alboa will uh, be able to participate in the future as well, because this is a very great op opportunity. Yep. Thank you very much, Mikkel. Thank you very much. That was really good to hear. Really good. Yeah, you, you, you've made a wonderful job together, definitely. Definitely. We, you had the functional sensors, and that's it. Wonderful. So, given that, we uh, can follow to the next project, which is the River Waste uh, from Brazil, focused on uh, the problem of plastics in our water. So, uh, Gabriela, can you hear me? Yes, Halby, I can. Marcela will connect the slides for us and we will begin. Yes, 
Wonderful. So Marcella is right now receiving the power to present. Yes. Thank you. Um, just a second. So hello everyone. Thank you all for being here today. Um, we are the River Waste Plastic Recovery Group and we will talk a little bit about how our project, um, the experience, how it was and what we actually um, focused on. So, Ma, can you please pass on? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Um, so hello everyone. Um, uh, we are the River Waste Group and we are far by five Brazilians. Four of us study production engineering here at the University of Brasilia, and one study architecture. Um, we have two students from um, Norway that studies economics, and three students of the Netherlands that studies um, mechanical engineering. So we all together got to the main objective of our project, which is prevent the arrival of plastic waste in Paranoa Lake here in Brasilia more focus on plastic, which is the main object of study of the national plan to combat garbage on sea. So we all together got to this main objective and we're going to talk about more in this presentation. So as Marcela said, our main goal during the APIC project was to understand the problem. Um, we had different nationalities, we have different backgrounds and we were very anxious to actually know the problem to later on move to the steps of actually improving and suggesting solutions for the problem but we actually start researching things so not only the problem but also all the scenarios the problem um, could be so how aggravating could it be and we actually had a very um, hard situation because the access of numbers and information about the problem were very restricted. So not only in the European Union, uh, we had difficulties accessing data, but especially in Brazil, because um, it's still a not um, very consolidated area. So um, that's where we are um, working right now because as Brazil had this um, very high level of difficulty in data collection, um, we actually decided to improve our EPIC project focusing in Brasilia. So we started from the base now we are building this space. So what exactly are we doing now? Um, we are focusing on mapping the plastic disposal flow. So not only the agents that participate, but the actual flow here on the federal district um, to estimate the volume of plastic discarded. And we are also going to another path that is the institutional mapping. So um, knowing not only the legislation, but the institu institutional role in here. So we are not only talking with all the institutions, but actually studying how their roles um, actually participate on the problem. And we are also um, trying to define and map variables that uh, are the variables that influence the plastic going to the lake. So we are going, um, after we finish, uh, we're going to have these three areas um, to actually build a base for later on um, start developing ways to collect more information for Brasilia and have um, better solutions and suggestions in the future. Mm, yes. So as a project outcomes, 
we noticed that the, we are a pilot project, so that means that it's the first project that brings together Brazilians and Dutch and Norwegian students and teachers focusing on the plastic waste management problem uh, here in Brasilia. And with this, uh, we have a model replication that um, we did a lot of deliveries of our research project that um, have based on models that can be replicated in other cities in Brazil or uh, with other students uh, from UNB. So this is a very good um, step. Yeah, especially considering that it is a problem that not only Brasilia have, but also a lot of other little cities in Brazil and that you don't have um, a very strong presence of the state or ac actually the, the regulation and legislation. So um, this is a very um, expected outcome of our project. Yeah. And also um, our methodology, we were developing the first methodology for data collection on plastic in lake waters in Brasilia. So as Camila said, we are here, we are really starting from ground zero and building this together. And this was only possible with a partnership with ADASA, which is the regulatory agency for water, energy and sanitation of federal district, um, SLU, which is the urban cleaning service and the Secretary de Obras, which is the construction secretary here in Brasilia. And um, our project also has a goal um, that is to incentive to preservation. So we want to influence future projects involving increasingly efficiency management of solid waste uh, and positively, positively impacting the water resources of federal district. So it is really a pilot project and we are doing great on this. So we are all very happy um, to actually have this opportunity and having this international collaboration, um, we could learn a lot. It was a very nice project and it is a very important matter, especially now that we can see uh, in this coronavirus situation that the use of plastic is increasing. Um, so this problematic will become even more serious in the future. So it was a very nice project. Um, we had a very uh, wonderful experience and we are very proud all, of all the advances we may achieve with all the project results. So we'd like to thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, girls. It was uh, really good. Exactly. This is a problem with uh, like a lack of data that is impressive. And you are studying the problem, which is really important. Understanding the problem to solve it. Thank you. And right Thank now, you. I invite the river waste also, but the river waste from mechanical engineering uh, that will be presenting uh, their, uh, their project. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Daniel? Yes, I can hear. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Great. So okay. I will I will give you the power to give the power uh, to smile. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Let's see. If, uh -huh. Daniel, just one second. Didn't even hear this. Did you receive? Hi, uh, hello. I still cannot spread presentation my my screen. Can you now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's it's Mateus, not Daniel. For Mateus. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's me. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's Matthias. It's Matthias. Okay, so perfect. Right. Okay. So let's start. Good morning, everyone. My name is Daniel. And I am Mateus. And we are the, the Mac team. Uh, we are on the Waste Collector project. Yeah. And like Professor Diane said before, uh, our project came with the proposal uh, that she had on Epic, uh, Epic Conference to make an extension project to build a watercraft to collect the garbage and waste at the rivers, lakes, and water flows in general. Um, our team is made by five mechanical engineering and accompanied by Professor Doka and Professor Diane. Um, so we start in the project studying and do research about the waste context in Brazil, mainly in our region, Brasilia, and how we know about the implications of the water crews like uh, social, economic, ambiental, and turkish implication of the waste in the water. Um, but we had a little difficult to find uh, specific information to about the type of waste on the water and researching a region. But thanks to some research and information and articles from production engineering team and some and Netherlands team and added to our research about existing solutions. We had enough material to define what type of watercraft we, we will build and what conditions uh, the watercraft will be subjected and define the, the parameters of, of the machine. And, and after this, define this parameter, these conditions of operations, we pass for the, the, the part of sizing and selection of components, uh, which are the part we are currently. And in the future, we intend to prototype this machine to really collect the waste on our region. So I will talk about a little bit more about the, the collector itself. So like Daniel said, after we have done all this, this research, well, we, we saw different kinds of solutions that already exist in the, in the combat of this waste issue around the world. And we, well, we did a few brainstorms and developed a few possible solutions for our local contests. And we defined the boundary conditions for the machine operation. And we made an initial design of the most important components of the machine. So that's the phase we are right now. And I will give you this overview about the machine itself how it works. Well, the, the collector works with a conveyor belt that removes the superficial garbage from the water and transports it to the reservoir that has a capacity near to one cubic meter. The boat has a propulsion system that is connected to the conveyor belt through a transmission system, and both of them are powered by the same electric motor, which is powered by a battery system, and the batteries are fitted with solar energy. And there also, there's also a steering system, which is made by rudders, but that's powered by a single small DC motor. And, oh, and the boat is remotely controlled also. So that, that was the first modeling that we have done. And since we have done it, some ideas and some mechanisms had changed. So that's not like the last version of our machine. Actually, that's the first we, we have modeled. So, but we brought it to, to bring some, some visual idea. And let me, with this. So right here, that's the, the conveyor belt. 
in the reservoir and that was the first propulsion system that we fought that we fought but it actually had changed like i said now the the there that's a there's a simple simplest one and we we that's the the um a panel a solar panel that we are not sure if it's going to be really placed above the boat or if we will pour the batteries outside the water because we still not dimension it the power supply of solar energy but that was like the first initial draft that we made so yeah this can i guess can can bring some visual idea of the the project and yes i guess this is it i like to would like to thank you and daniel if you want to say something more yes thank you everyone for attention uh we learn a, a, a lot of things we doing this project and we intend to to proceed this project uh, doing the size and the engineering size and make this project come true and it is wonderful wonderful thank you guys thank you guys uh yeah you're building a very nice machine and, and yeah you have changed some of the uh, some of the decisions you had made but it's really interesting to see it a uh, very important solution for plastic that solid plastic in in water definitely thank you so uh, now to the girls of river waste design uh, uh, who is going to present Liza or Pamela hi everyone hi Mateus I'm going to present so please give me the power <laughs> to Wonderful. share my screen Wonderful, let me see here. I'm going to present with Ligia. She's one of the students. Okay, okay. Time. So, Liza, did you receive the power? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. I will start it here. Oops. Okay. Okay. Ligia, are you there? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay. So, so uh, good morning, good afternoon, hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to represent the Design Plastic Waste Project. Uh, we are composed by three teachers advisors, Gianni Viana and Pamela Marx, both teachers at University of Brasilia. And I am a master's student at University of Brasilia, working together with them. We are 11 Brazilian students and we are, we are going to, to work as well with the, with the engineer team. We have actually a, a engineering students student with us. So some of us, Diane Viana, Pamela Marx, me and Ligia, we are, um, which we are going to present our project. So we came from this big project, the EPIC, so design and engineering students working together, but we started in May 2020, this year, and uh, when we started to work together, we first have this immersion in the situation. We are having every week, we have uh, meetings, online meetings, of course, because of the situation we are facing now. So we had the immersion uh, about the, the, the problem of plastic and we, we were studying the data collected by the international team so by now july 2020 we have these situations that we're crossing the information from brazil international we're crossing the data we're seeing 
how the data from international team applies to our reality. And we are also uh, researching about the possible blend materials because we are working, we're going to work with these materials to turn these plastic waste into objects. So we have seen so far uh, that we have the cigarette butts as a very good field to, to research. And we have these promising applications, which are, which are uh, plastic wood, econeal, plastic sand as well. And these are the most found plastics in Brazil, uh, PP, PET, PS, LDPE, which are straw cap, cigarette butts, plastic bottles, supermarket, supermarket bags and other plastic bags as well. We have a lot of styrofoam as well. Glasses, places, and plastic clutter are also very found. And we are comparing with the international data that they have, uh, we have some different plastics found here in Brazil. And this is according to the consumption of plastics. And that's why we need to, to cross these informations. And actually, Brazil is the fourth country in the world that, that produce and consume more plastics, only behind the United States, China, and India. And uh, we know that all these plastics are thrown in the oceans. And we think that, we think, no, we, we all know that because of the situation, the pandemic, we're using a lot of plastics, disposable things, uh, and we'll probably see an increasing of plastics being thrown on the ocean. And uh, now Ligia is going to, to talk about the new materials blend and blends that include recycled materials. Please, Ligia. Uh, thank you, Liza. One of the most common materials in Brazil's beaches and rivers uh, are the cigarette butts. So that is why we thought it was interesting to study about it. And it can be used in the fabrication of bricks, artisanal paper, and as a fertilizer for plantations uh, when it's used um, as a blend. So this is one of the things we're looking into. Uh, and the plastic wood uh, is really interesting also because it can be made out of different types of post-consumer recycled plastic, such as um, different types of fiber, like different types of wood or even uh, coconut fiber. Okay. And we're also researching uh, plastic sand that can be used in civil construction uh, to and in many other purposes like in the fabrication of tiles paving stones and roads um, used as a substitute for a natural sand and yes that's what we're looking into right now so thank you very much thank you uh, so we are still be uh, in the beginning of our research and uh, we have seen that we have a lot to do with the girls that just had the, the presentation about the river plastic. And we really want to, to get more close to, to, to the research they are developing. So I don't know if Professor Diana wants to, to, to add something, maybe. Great girls, Professor Gianni, do you want to add something? Anything? Hello, can you see me, hear me? Yes, can see you? no, but hear yes. <laughs> uh, I can't uh, put the camera. Yeah, but that's okay. Hello. Uh, as, I say, as I had said before, that students from Netherlands contacted us uh, for some information and um, I decided to contact some colleagues, Professor Thiago Doca and P 
prof and Professor Pamela. And we get, uh, to help me to get together as many as we could né, to develop these two projects. And for the first project, as you see, we have five students from eight semester of mechanical engineer. And the second project, we formed a team of 11 students of various levels and course from design and engineering. We consider that these projects are results of EPIC and that their development is still initial, but should continue at least until the end of the year. And I expect that uh, we get to, um, also some other students from other countries to contribute and to participate in this project projects yeah, the next semester. And I, uh, I'm very happy to the, for this opportunity. Congratulations, uh, Mateus Haub for the event and thank you very much for the participation. Thank you, Professor Gianni. Thank you. It was really good that, uh, like, this process was really good that uh, we could get projects from Epic and bring more teams from Brazil to develop, uh, uh, like, in the brace of uh, 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 engin uh, mechanical engineering and also design. So that's very fortunate. And having the design gears, uh, searching the researching the materials is really important because we need to understand what are the kinds of uh, of materials that are polluting our our water. So then, when we we get them uh, to the surface, when we recover them, we know uh, we know what to do with them, and that's perfect. So thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. So right now we are going to invite. Uh, we've, we are done with the river waste and now we are going to invite the mobile education team to uh, give us a presentation on their subject. Isabel, can you hear me? Let me see. Julia, yes. 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 Is Isabel, Isabel told me that she is having some internet connection problems. I don't know if she can hear us, but I was talking to her just now. Okay, okay. So she will present the, the screen, right? Yes, but okay, you, can, so you can give me the power to help me. I can present it if she is unable, as it seems. All right. I could also I could also uh, follow the schedule and then bring you back later. Do you prefer or? Yes. Let, let me see with her. I think it, follow the schedule and we. I'll keep in touch with you, when I hear from her. Okay. Okay. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So uh, right now, then uh, I must uh, invite the teams from Tunisia from the development of the software. Right, we had the software uh, to be developed, and uh, the, uh, as we lost funds from the University of Brasilia, the Tunisian team brought the fight, like <laughs> they they got into the fight and helped a lot on this. So I first of all would like to invite Professor Simoni and uh, Everaldo to uh, say some words. Professor Simoni, can you hear me? Yes, I'll be. Wonderful. Uh, so present Puma, Nizar is already there, Everaldo also there, Professor Simone. The floor is yours. The virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Raudi. I am very pleased to talk about the partnership with Professor Haller. This semester, we began our partnership about the development of two modules of Puma. Professor Haller brilliantly led the work of his teams. Besides that, our students participated in the development process and they managed the project very well. Now, Everaldo will present you the Puma platform. 
Everaldo. Thank you, Professor Simone. How? Can you hear me? Can I share my screen? How? Yes, you can, Mr. Everaldo. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, we can hear you. Please. Yes. I will turn you at as a presenter, so now you can do it. Just a moment. I can share my Oh. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, let's go. Hello, everyone. Let me introduce myself. I'm Everaldo Junior. I'm graduated in production engineering in the last year. Now, I'm a master's student in applied computing of computer science at the University of Brasilia. And my master project is about the Puma platform for unifying methodology of active learning. So my part of this platform is, is my master project. And I'm going to introduce this platform. After me, the Tunisian team is you present about two specific models. And I will return to talk about the Puma workshop, the international Puma workshop, it will happen in Thailand. So, what is the Puma? Many universities have applied the PBL methodology. What is the PBL methodology? The PBL methodology is a student-centered, collaborative, non-traditional, approach to education in which students can learn and get skills through projects, through real problems from companies. So, uh, but in the PBL process, there are many steps, many activities. For example, get projects, choose projects, team building, uh, P assessment, and feedbacks, uh, give feedbacks to stakeholders in other activities. So it's a big challenge because there are many steps. So it's necessary to develop a system or a platform for, for centralization and automation PBL process for university courses uh, to support this, this process, this methodology. Um, an example of this is the production engineering course. In production engineering course at University of Brasilia, there are eight courses. Yes, eight courses. Name it PSP. PSP one, two, you know. PSP yes, one, two, three, four. And in these courses, these courses create information, information about students, students' performance in, and professor performance about the PBL methodology and the other information, other important information. So, universities as production engineer, uh, as spread from Tunisia and the other countries, need to use this information to improve the PBL methodology, to improve the student's performance and the other methodology, or the methodology of active learning. In, in this way, for this, Puma was born, Puma was created in this context 
the initial idea uh, of the Puma pro the production engineer, but this platform is open, open for using the other other universities, other departments. So I will talk about some goals, specific goals. The first specific goal is create integrate inputs and results of projects developed by students. Uh, semester by semester, projects have developed by universities, by Tunisia, by Brazil, University of Brazilia, and the other countries. Uh, so we need to integrate these results these inputs of projects and other other specific goals is allow continuous alignment with market demand for students skills capacities because companies companies can put can submit their projects in Puma platform so students can solve these problems, these projects, and improve, improve, improve skills and the other knowledges. Other specific goals is disseminate the results of best projects uh, to improve students' learning. Uh, the, the idea is to create uh, a uh, open call, open call for companies in which companies can submit their projects, their problems. So the universities can disseminate these results. Uh, other goals is evaluate the satisfaction of stakeholders with the projects developed. Uh, throw feedbacks, uh, feedbacks to companies and the other mechanism. Uh, other goals is measure the efficiency of PBL methodology uh, because uh, they will be put information of projects of PBL methodology of application of PBL methodology. So uh, it is possible measure the efficiency of PBL. And the last goal is evaluate the evolution of the student's performance. Uh, the Tunisian students gonna talk about this, about two specific modules. Uh, modules developed through the collaboration between Tunisian team from Spritz and Brazilian team from University of Brasilia. Uh, this collaboration was started in the last, yes, in the last year because me and Professor João Melo and the other Brazilian students uh, visited Tunisia. We participated uh, the uh, International Congress, the name it Project Approaches in Engineering Education, PAEE. -E. So uh, it was really good. Uh, it, and so this partnership, this collaboration was started. So now I will return after presentation by Tunisian team because I will talk about this Congress and about the Puma workshop, the Puma International Workshop. It will be happen in Thailand in this year, in the Congress of this year. So, uh, Nisa, maybe, or help.
Professor yes, Valera. perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Everaldo. Thank you for the contextualization. Uh, Puma platform is very important. And now let's uh, have the guys of from Tunisia to present uh, their work on it. Uh, who who is going to start? Uh, Nizar Amin. Uh, I, I'm going to start. Okay, you so you are going to present, right, Nizar? Yeah. No, it's me, uh, Amin. I will be present. Oh, it's Amin. It's Amin. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you have it, Amin. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, let's go then. So, hello everyone. I'm pleased to be present amongst you today. My name is Ayari Mohamdemi, and my partner's name is Nizar Mejri. We're members hello, everyone. of the group. We're members of the group that worked on the development of the PBL platform, and specifically on the team building through students' preferences and competences module. And we will be giving you a brief and general presentation of our project. The presentation will be divided into five parts. The introduction, the issues, the proposed solution, the used technologies, and finally, the functional and non-functional requirements. Problem-based learning is a student-centered, collaborative, and non-traditional approach to education in which students learn uh, learn about uh, a subject through the experience of solving an open-minded problem is a central place in the learning activity. This teaching method is gaining a lot of popularity due to its effectiveness, but it's not perfect. It has many issues. The group projects uh, are good for learning and developing overall soft skills, but this methodology also comes with a few shortcomings. The biggest ones are the lack of equitability. Some students find themselves doing most of the work, and there's also the problem of the members uh, that do not fit the profile, as in they do not have the required skills for a given project. All of these problems combined affect heavily the, performers, the performance of the group. There's uh, the problems that I just talked about. And we found out uh, that these problems indeed affect uh, the performance of the group because we conducted a, uh, a small research. We sent a form to uh, many students at Esprit and they gave us these answers. Most of them were unsatisfied with the current group creation process and uh, most of them uh, are interested in the process of group creation based on uh, preferences and skills. So, the proposed solution. In order to remedy this, these problems, we, we decided to uh, develop an app that solves those problems while keeping in mind the, shortcom the shortcomings of our competitors. We divided our project into seven main modules, the user, user's management module, the project management, group, group and vote management, <coughs> I'm sorry, documentation management, statistics and history, events and workshops, and finally the communication module. And now I will leave the virtual floor to my uh, partner, Nizar, who will uh, talk to you about the next part of the presentation. Thank you very much, I mean. Uh, our use technology for this uh, platform <coughs> were mainly... Uh, can you move to the next slide, I mean? Thank you. Uh, we ought to use the, uh, the, the MERN stack for this project, which uh, compromises the following technologies. Uh, MongoDB for management of the databases, uh, ExpressGS, ReactGS for the front end, and finally Node.js for the back end. The main advantages for the for developers using the MERS stack is that every line of code is written in JavaScript. 
this is a programming language that uh, that's used everywhere both uh, for client side and server side code with one language across uh, across three tiers uh, there's no need for uh, context switching that uh, the and this will help us uh, have uh, uh, a fast and effective uh, application uh, moving on to the functional and non-functional requirements the non function uh, the functional requirements are uh, uh, sorry the functional and non-functional requirements we already discussed the functional requirements in the proposed solutions the uh, the main modules that uh, my colleague I mean uh, spoke of uh, and for the non-functional requirements uh, we focused on three main points performance because of the large amount of data the application must be efficient and respond to users requests in minimum time uh, ergonomics the application must be easy to access and does not require time learning it will have simple interfaces ergonomic and easy to use um, the last point is the security the application must be secured against unauthorized action uh, to 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 ensure that we installed in our application uh, a two-way uh, register uh, factors uh, when the users uh, register they should receive an email to to verify uh, their ad identities and all the uh, other data are encrypted in the our databases so uh, there's no leak of data and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, that Esprit and uh, UMB gave us uh, it's been uh, a great uh, a great adventure uh, for uh, all of our teams in Tunisia, uh, if I may speak uh, for them. And uh, thank you very much. I would also uh, like to take this opportunity to thank everyone that worked on this project. It was a pleasure. I would like to thank Mr. Simon, Mr. Uh, Jao Melo, Mr. Khaled, and uh, my colleagues as well. Thank you. Thank you, Nizar. Thank you, Amin. It was yeah. really good. Uh, yeah, the whole process and also uh, the, to, to see your presentation, really good. And now uh, the, the team of peer evaluation, uh, peer assessment is uh, present here. Who is going to present? Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me, Matthias? Uh, oh yes, uh, uh, no, I can, but I, but I, but I can't. Uh, I can't see yet who is talking. Yeah, he is uh, talking. My camera is on. And, oh, okay, uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. I, I I can see you now. I can see you now. Do you uh, you want the power to share your screen, right? Yes. Let me. Perfect. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. You have. Can you see now? Uh, yes. My presentation. Yes, I can. Okay. Just a second, so. That... Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ihab uh, Zweri. My colleagues are uh, Mohamed Bufaid, Adam Benzarb, Mohamed Aziz. And uh, I'm here today uh, glad to present you our uh, project, which is peer assessment for holistic student uh, development. Our teachers, uh, as you know, are uh, Mr. Simoni uh, and uh, Mr. Khaled, also Mr. Uh, Jaumelo. And uh, I'm going to show you our plan our plan as you can see is composed of uh, introduction introduction problematic and motivation proposed solution and also uh, the technologies that we used for our project so uh, to start with uh, we have to uh, know what we are going to work uh, with which is peer evaluation and uh, most uh, students don't know the real meaning of peer evaluation and the value of this uh, evaluation. So uh, first of all, 
uh, peer evaluation uh, or uh, peer review, also peer assessment, is an educational activity in which students judge the performance of their peers. Also, in our uh, solution, we've proposed that uh, students can uh, also evaluate uh, themselves. So it can uh, take different forms depending on the characteristic of its implementation, the learners and uh, the learning context. So for uh, the characteristic, uh, it's combined of uh, hard skills and soft skills. Also, each uh, skill is uh, combined of uh, micro and uh, micro skills. So for uh, the problematic uh, regarding the technical and learning strategies deployed in our university, there is a lot of lack of history record regarding the students' performance. So, uh, and also teachers rarely detect the students' uh, differences uh, early on which will conclude the, to the students' failure. And that's a big, big problem. And peer evaluation isn't deployed yet in our universities, as you know. We only uh, rely on uh, the teacher's uh, feedback, which is uh, a problem. So for our motivation, why we are using peer evaluation? It will provide a structured learning process for students to criticize and provide feedback to each other and also to, uh, to uh, themselves on their work. So it will help them improve their performance on assessed work. Peer evaluation can also solve uh, in engaging students in the learning process, which now we are uh, we, we we only uh, the only the teachers are uh, the only uh, judges in our uh, parkour in uh, education. So uh, with peer evaluation, the students are uh, engaged in the learning process and develops their capacity to reflect on and critically evaluate their own learning and skill development. That's our main goal. So for the proposed solution, we've created the, a web application in which students can perform the peer evaluation and online training so they can improve their performance as assessed work. Also, uh, we've created a lot of uh, features uh, that, stu that students and also teachers can use to compare uh, the advancement in uh, every uh, project of each student and also uh, students can compare each uh, their their skills in each project with other students and uh, we used the, also as uh, the first team the merstack gs for uh, technologies which is uh, mongodb and express as database, React.js as uh, development front-end, and Node.js as uh, back-end uh, development. And uh, I'm so glad here that, I, that I'm here today with you presenting uh, our project. And thanks everyone for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Ihab. That was a pleasure. Really good uh, to hear uh, from you, like, some uh, yeah the perspectives on the the platform developed uh, yep definitely and and it, it will integrate the Puma platform which is a very very good purpose great purpose so thank you thank very you, much ahead so, so right now we get back to the epic project uh, and go to the mobile education team. Uh, is Julia and Isabel, are Julia and Isabel uh, able to, to present right now? Yes, let us just hear from Isabel. Are you here? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Who's going be to share? Presenting, Halby. You can okay, give me the. Julia. My internet connection is quite low. Okay, no problem, Bell. Are you seeing? Is everything okay? Yes. Okay. So I'm Julia, and here with Isabel, we are going to present the mobile education project. 
So in the beginning, the question that moved us was how can we improve the financial literacy of the Brazilian waste pickers? Why this question? Because after the closure of the dump site in 2018, the waste pickers needed to adapt to a new reality. Uh, before they were used to receive money on daily basis as they sell the materials that they would collect from the dump site. However, now they only receive it on the end of the month. And in addition to that, most of them had uh, reduced from their income. So it's really important that they learn financial management in order to, to improve their, their livelihood. So our goal was to create a prototype of the front end of an application that would help these waste pickers to properly manage their money. We decided to do an app because we believe that mobile education can be something that really engage them. They could use the app on their homes, on their way to work. So we intend to, to use technology in our favor here, basically. Uh, now talking about the phases of the research, how did we structure our project? The first phase was the requirement solicitation. This was done in partnership between University of Brasilia and Alborg University. This partnership began on EPIC 2020. And for this phase of requirement solicitation, we did basically interviews and also a survey with some of the way speakers. However, due to COVID-19, we were not able to do it as we wish. But after these requirements were elicited, the prototype was developed by the Danish team. And after the development of the prototype, we needed to validate the usability of it. So this validation was also done in partnership. And also <laughs> due to COVID-19, we were not able to do it as we planned. So we intend to in the future um, do it with the way speakers because we were not able to contact them in person because of coronavirus. And the last phase is the suggestion of new ideas that University of Brasilia is going to, to is presenting. We want to create a platform out of this application and Isabel is going to, to explain better how this works. At first, our prototype was named EFA. So in English means financial education for adults. And all the front end of the prototype was developed by the Danish students. And since we have considered that the users, the main users of the app, so the way speakers would be illiterate or semi-literate, the interface was designed to attain uh, their needs. So a get it out of button was placed in the upper right side of every screen. So the way speakers could have a get it tour of the app and the app would also have the way speakers um, would also help the way speakers to calculate their uh, daily ava avail available income and add savings and see how much uh, their savings will impact in their future economy. And Julia, can you pass, please? Yes. Thank you. And. Uh, applying the new suggestions that the Brazilian students had, uh, the new app would be called PEFA, so Platform of Financial Education for Adults. And at first, we plan to validate EFA's prototype, that was the first version of it, uh, with our main persona, so the way speakers. And later, we plan to add financial and education courses so the way speakers can have access to basic financial management learning and use the app more easily and understand the importance of using it and manage, managing their finance. And later, we thought about uh, a gamification. So we suggested that we could have a gamification with digital currency uh, and if the user achieved the minimum amount of coins in a month, we could provide it uh, a ba basic food basket that is everything uh, that a family needs to uh, have to eat in a month. And we would also suggest adding a family inclusion feature, feature so the children can also be included in the app as the whole family. And at least uh, 
And at last, we thought about finding stakeholders so they can help us sponsor the project. And everything would give the output of the PFAS prototype and how was the whole experience um, that we had, right? Uh, working in an international partnership for a whole semester. Um, our group had three people from Denmark and four from Brazil. And the help uh, that we got because of the different backgrounds was amazing. So we got many insights, uh, many different ideas to help to create the project by itself. Yes, and also it was interesting to see that we had different knowledge contributions because we from Brazil, we, we do production engineering and the girls from Denmark, they study engineering psychology. So that was really interesting to see and we working together. And also we were able to communicate really well to make plan and schedule meetings, especially considering that we are in different time zones and it was really interesting, the whole experience. We believe that for us personally, it, it really made a huge impact on our graduation experience. So we are really glad, glad that we could be part of it. And now I want to thank you for your attention and for being part of EPIC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank you very much, Belle. Uh, it was uh, really good, and the mobile education for way speakers project is really, really important. Uh, we are going to have a, a, a like a big workforce on it in the next semester and also in the next uh, days. So uh, it's really, really good uh, to hear like from us, from you, uh, the results of your project. Now uh, we are going uh, to have uh, presentations of the, our partner professor, professors, our international partner professors on the international uh, partnership, on their uh, perspectives, uh, their thoughts uh, about uh, the future, uh, and, and, and like all their, their, their understanding of the potential of this and what we have done. So I start with Jens. Uh, Jens, are you there? Yes, he is. Yes, 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 I'm here. Wonderful. Uh, should but I give maybe... you the power to present? Yes, please give me the power to present. Yes. Yes, there it is. I, I've sent the power. OK, apparently this is not so easy. <laughs> um, but so this is not easy um, because I apparently need to restart it in order to allow. Mm, they are they are asking you to to restart. Uh, okay, okay. Um, I'm, maybe if I send my slides to you by email, maybe you can put them on. Yeah, you can do it. I can do it very fast here. So uh, if anybody needs a one second coffee break or another kind of bio break, <laughs> this is a very Wonderful. good time. So here you go. Do you have the slides now? Let me see here. Yes, I do. Perfecto. My Spanish is getting very bad because I didn't travel for half a year. So I will do the presentation in English today. <laughs> no, let's not mix Portuguese with Spanish because we know the results. So yeah, yeah. I will be. Potonial. I will be presenting right now. There it is. Perfect. So, um, 
Oh, I feel that I have uh, more than one hat here because I have Albo University hat, I have Epic hat, I have our great uh, Global Students SDG Challenge hat, uh, but uh, right now I put on the Epic hat um, and uh, tell a little bit about how the Epic project can, I think, uh, survive and uh, do good stuff. So you can go to the next slide. Yes. And Epic is an Erasmus Plus project, and this is the last year of Epic. And what EPIC is really all about is to bring students together. It's not about eating. It's about bringing students together uh, with different backgrounds uh, from different nationalities and solving real world problems together. Um, and what an amazing match between that and then the Global Students SDG Challenge and the work we are doing here, because this is all about bringing students together from different countries, different disciplines, in order to solve real world problems related to the sustainable development goals. And as you can see in the slide here, EPIC is also very much about blending the physical and the virtual learning spaces. So both meeting together and doing things physically, but also the virtual collaboration. And then you are in the right place. And then it's of course very much about also the, if you go back. Yes. Yeah also about working with the sustainable development goals and solving the sustainable development goals. And I think that one of the things we found out in the EPIC project was that when we were doing different student projects in different places, it was hard for them to relate them to each other, but that the work with sustainability and sustainable development goals is really what has managed to bring the different projects together. So students working on IoT, students working on learning, students working on textile, uh, they could understand what, what each other were doing because they were kind of contributing to solving the same kind of problems. And I think that's a very important statement to do. So you can move to the next slide. Because I just wanted in the next slide to show that there are different models that students can actually collaborate on. And we have been exploring the different models in the EPIC project. And I think that also is a good way of thinking uh, the products that we are doing together and that we are hopefully going to do more together. Namely that the products can be super integrated where the students from Denmark, Brazil, Tunisia, Holland, uh, Chile, other countries, where they really work together in one group. But it can also be that you have a problem and then you have maybe two students doing a product or a thesis and that they work more independently uh, with different aspects of the product and of course communicate to, to each other, but that they solve different, that you can split the problem in different parts and solve them together and then uh, make it go together in the end. But there are many ways of doing it. And it also means that we can fit with the different uh, uh, working styles. Yeah, you can go to the next. <laughs> um, so here basically I show the, the EPIC uh, timeline because I think that's also very useful in our context. Um, EPIC was only running in the spring semester. So we had an application deadline where students could apply. We could assign uh, the products then before the semester starts. The semester really starts around the 1st of February. Uh, then there are online modules which are enabling uh, students to work together, uh, working on team, team management skills, uh, problem analysis skills, um, communication skills, time planning skills and so on. Um, and then having a seminar, bringing all the people together for five days. And I think that this, I mean, this is our epic, you can say cousin uh, to the um, SDG workshops that we had in Brazil so many times. But it's really about bringing the students together physically to develop the products and get the good base uh, and the good product plan that you need in order to do the virtual collaboration phase. And I think that in everything we have done in Erasmus Plus projects on blended mobilities, it turns out that the physical seminar is really, really important because when you have been together for a week, it's a lot easier to work together virtually afterwards. And I think that many of the great results that you have all been doing uh, here in, um, in this year, it would have been difficult to achieve if you didn't have, have had the meeting in, uh, in Hamburg. And then, of course, there is a product hand-in, um, there is a local hand-in, and then there is an evaluation. And what we did in, in EPIC 
uh, and also in the setup that we have created around the collaboration with Priscilla and everyone here, is that uh, students are defending the products or attending the exams locally and according to local rules. And the very good reason for that is that then we can do this kind of collaboration without having to go through too many formalities and having to change the regulations, but we can do it based on the existing legal frameworks. And that's making everything easier. And you can go to the next slide. And uh, I'm already speaking too much. But this is the last slide. What I think we can learn from EPIC and what I think is important when we look forward is first of all, that it's great to have Brazilian friends, but also other nationalities on board. So I think that this last year of EPIC has really been amazing. Um, and I hope that we can expand it to get more countries and more universities on board. Um, but at the same time, I think it's really important that those partners who join have the commitment because commitment is also key to make things happen. Uh, I think we have really achieved something. If I look at back at the, the work we have done um, in our SDG project since we met in, in when was it, uh, 2017 in Bogota with Jaumelo, I think that the most amazing we have done is really this half year because the collaboration has worked so well and we have gotten so far in making actually useful things out of it. Um, I think, as I said before, the SDGs are super powerful as a framework in order to have the joint student projects. Um, and I think that this collaboration we have here is really what could make the EPIC approach sustainable and continue uh, working like this, even if this is the last year of EPIC, it's finishing the 1st of September. But I see this as the natural, you can say, child of EPIC that will <laughs> make it continue to live. Uh, or a child of not only of EPIC, but you know, um, successful kids have many fathers, how you say it. Um, I think that some of the components could be to keep on doing projects every semester so that we never fall asleep, but that we always keep on having something up running because if it falls asleep and if we have to, to wake it up again, we lose a lot of resources. So the continuity, I think, is very important. I think integration with curricula is very important that we um, that it fits into the learning objectives of the students and the local environments. Uh, I think that the close collaboration with the surrounding communities is important. Like in Brazil, we have the collaboration with the waste pickers. Um, I think also that this a yearly or half yearly physical events is a very important factor of it. And then I think we have one challenge, and that is what I would call the 90% finished syndrome. So if we want to continue doing this kind of projects, we have to make sure that we can achieve something that is good enough to be used and actually make a difference. And I think that that's always what we are struggling with in a type of project like this, is that you almost make it. Uh, and you almost make it good enough, but that means that it will never take the last step and actually be used by the waste pickers organizations or be used in schools or be used in other places. And I think that if you really want an impact, and if you want to stand and say, this is what we did, I think we should get beyond the 90% finished and really try to achieve that the things we do, we're able to get at least some of the products into a 100% finished state where we can hand it over to local communities and organizations. Uh, but thanks to, um, my time is running out. Uh, thanks especially to Mateus for all the work that you have been doing all the time. I think that you are the main responsible that this project uh, is alive and, mm -hmm. uh, and running well. So, uh, and thanks of course to all the professors and all the students who have made it possible. And now I know that the Danish students, I, I promised them to speak for five minutes only. And I did not, I broke, I broke my promise once again. So uh, uh, I will hand over the word to the Danish students. Yes, uh, Matthias, <laughs> can you give me the power? Oh, yes, absolutely, Robert. Okay, now we, now we have Roberto here. So I will give you the power in just a second. Uh, yeah. All the way in the bottom.
Well, uh, Miguel and I are going to talk a bit about uh, like the plan for like finishing uh, the project that we have been uh, doing uh, during this semester. Uh, I will see if it's. I have to do like this. Share. And uh, can you see my screen now, Miguel? Yep. Someone. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. So. We are going to start with the project. Uh, we are part of the IoT uh, in selective collection, and uh, like we have this initial concept, as you see, where we have a sensor system, and then we have a, like a central server that, uh, like the dashboard that uh, the Brazilian students uh, built, uh, can interact with the server, and also uh, the root optimization uh, that uh, um, the guy from Turkey did as well. Um, and then, uh, then the idea is that we have the end devices that, that you see over here that the, are the, the physical devices that are placed in the trash cans and then you have some gateways that they have to talk to and then uh, the gateway talks to like a, uh, a network system that uh, will make it able to do all the calculations and stuff and uh, also in the further on uh, creating a system that can um, that can handle like uh, more cities, uh, more like different areas, so that we can uh, say, okay, now we just look at the the trash cans in a certain area, uh, or we want to have a if we brought it out, uh, build the system so that it's possible to uh, make a similar s system uh, in uh, Tunisia or or in another city in uh, Brussels or in Denmark as well. So that is the idea. Um, yeah, the, our project uh, pro uh, product that we ended up with the implementation that uh, Luisa also showed is uh, the sensor that you see to the right, which is the small box that will be placed inside the con uh, container. Uh, right now, it will measure the, the distance down to the trash, and uh, based on the distance from the sensor to the trash, it will calculate how full the container is. And then you have uh, the gateways that will be placed uh, on high points uh, so that they can co communicate to each other. Yes. Uh, we also did some simulations uh, and some tests uh, that showed that uh, uh, this uh, system will actually work better. Uh, to the right here, you see all ball. And like uh, optimal, you will have a green, uh, the green color all the places like you see in Brazil. Uh, it, it's an indicator of like the expected signal strength. Uh, so based on uh, on the simulations that we did, uh, you can see some small uh, markers where the containers will be. Uh, all the containers will be in a, a green area, meaning that uh, we should have a great connectivity so that the system should actually work quite well, uh, depending on some the noise ratio that will be in Brasilia because it's a larger city. So if uh, everything works well, uh, the system will actually work quite well, uh, the technical part. Um, and then we have the, the platform that the Brazilians uh, created, uh, showing all the data that uh, is collected uh, by the sensors. Um, uh, but like now to the like the big part of uh, what we are going to talk about here is uh, how we can further develop uh, the, this uh, this project and continue uh, like working on it uh, further on the next uh, semester. Um, we have uh, we are going to make a project proposals for the new uh, students that will start uh, this semester uh, the, with like that they can create a, a system that can uh, use like utilize other sensors than the distance uh, sensor that we are using right now to like choose some sensors that will uh, uh, be able to give the exact data that the, the company uh, Green uh, will, would like to have um, so that we can give exactly what data that they, they would uh, like. Uh, maybe also make it uh, like optimize uh, the size of it or and make it uh, better, uh, like better, better resistant and such. 
And then also we have another pro project proposal for the uh, computer engineering students at Alba University as well. Um, is like creating this uh, system where we can handle uh, multiple uh, cities, uh, optimizing it so that we can have some uh, optimize the database and, and such. And then also combine uh, the work that we did, uh, like the Brazilians, uh, were the, uh, the Brazil, and uh, the, we did, uh, and then like combine the work with the root optimization for as it is right now the the, uh, the platform and our system uh, that we develop is able to interact, but we are not uh, yet uh, interacting uh, with the root optimization. So that is also uh, a, a thing that could be like a almost a complete project uh, in like developing and finishing this uh, interaction between the root optimization and the, the platform that we're doing. So that is like uh, some of the projects that we're going to propose to new students uh, uh, this semester. Mikkel, do you have anything to add? Yeah, um, just a little bit. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so basically, what I think is also important to mention is uh, we're, we're going for the, the, the students that's just uh, arriving at Aalborg University because it's really important for us to, to gather the, the students for, to collaborate outside the university as early as possible. Uh, because what I have been experiencing is when the students come to the, the later semesters, they'll be all in the, uh, they, they will not uh, really join new things and uh, it's hard for us to get them to join these international collaborations or collaborations outside uh, the university. So the early we get to them is, uh, is really good for us and uh, we hope to, to get a lot more students into this kind of collaboration because it's, it's really great for uh, yeah, for the university and, and the students as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Mikel. Thank you, Roberto. That was like, I, I mean, the work of yours, it was like really, really, really good. Uh, of course, you, you made this, uh, functional sensor and like we, we must make make it clear that it was like definitely uh, a very important result because it was so concrete so thank you uh, and, and and also thanks uh, special thanks to Jens uh, who we spoke uh, earlier which was really good and an honor for all of us mm -hmm. and right now uh, we are going to have uh, Professor Natasha here. Professor uh, Natasha from the Netherlands. Uh, can you hear me, Natasha? Perfect. Okay. Try to share my presentation. Oh, yes. Let me just give you the famous power to present. Yes, there it is. Okay. Mm I don't think I'm allowed to. I think it is the same Mac problem as I have. Yeah, I guess so. I will send it to you then, Mateus. It's Perfect. opening all kinds of security settings. And I'm not allowed to share anything. I'll send my, uh, my presentation to you. Wonderful, wonderful. wonderful.
Okay, you should have it in your mailbox now. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't receive it yet, but uh, did you send to Mateus Consigo? Yes. All right. Well, in, in any case, uh, even without a presentation, it, there's not that much uh, that I cannot tell without uh, without this on the screen. Uh, nice. I was just uh, ah, reflecting a little bit about what this actually means uh, to uh, Saxion, where I work as, as an institution. As Jens had made a very good introduction of what EPIC means uh, to all the partners and to uh, especially to all the students participating in EPIC. Uh, I've tried to do uh, something from the perspective of us as an institution, what it actually means to us and what as a university you can, uh, uh, you gain, you are gaining from EPIC. Um, and um, we actually uh, included uh, the EPIC experience in, um, in our Smart Solution Semester. And in the presentation, I try to explain what the Smart Solution Semester is. It's a whole semester, like 700 hours for students that they spend together as a group, normally as a group in, uh, in Saxion with other Saxion students. But the students participating in EPIC did it in a different and much more international uh, context. Um, which gave them the opportunity to uh, to also participate in uh, in Epic, but also have this as a regular part of their um, their courses that they do. Um, it's part of the Smart Solution Semester for our students, and uh, together with my colleague Christian, we uh, designed a careful selection process. And I think that's an important thing for uh, for all the students uh, and also for uh, for the universities. Um, yeah, you can, yes, this one, um, and also for the university, uh, to have students that are really, really motivated, uh, that really want to participate, that are eager to uh, work in an international context, uh, and um, we, we ask our students, like, why do you actually want this, why do you want to participate in EPIC, and what's so important for you? and they were really motivated to uh, participate. We had Dutch students, we also had uh, international students. And another thing about uh, the Saxion participation is um, uh, the connection with the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, we already had the participation of a research group of Saxion uh, in the second year. But this year we had two research groups, Sustainable Functional Textiles, uh, as well as Lightweight Structures. And they both are um, working very hard on sustainable development goals and their themes. Uh, the river waste uh, project and the textile recycling actually fitted really well into uh, the EPIC project. Um, so, yes. Uh, and the other thing is, um, Jens explained a bit about EPIC, but EPIC didn't start from scratch. Uh, EPIC was, in fact, for us, uh, jumping on a running train because there was another project, Colibri, before with um, uh, a whole team of uh, especially engineering people. Um, and uh, my colleague and me, we, are, uh, we don't have an engineering background, so we thought we have hopefully something else to offer. And uh, in this running train, we tried to get more like the educational contributions in the project. Uh, the intercultural communication um, that uh, one of our colleagues did, uh, that was very important in the beginning. We also heard from the students, not only getting to know each other as a group, but also uh, getting to know the off state dimensions, uh, the self-test on uh, how are you, uh, how is your culture, and how does your culture relate to the culture from people from other countries, and what does this mean for you working together in a group? Uh, and how can you actually use this to uh, to assess yourself as a group? We also try to 
uh, contribute a little bit to teacher training. What is the role for tutor? How can you be a good coach? What is motivation? Why is motivation so very much important for you as a student and as a tutor to uh, motivate your students? Um, let's do the next. And um, the peer assessment. Uh, the system didn't always work 100%, but at least we tried to uh, work very hard on, uh, on the platform um to um work on intercultural communication uh on international collaboration and in that way shift responsibilities for the peer assessment process and for the working together part to the students as much as possible and include project management skills as well into the system uh to help the students as much as possible in their collaboration projects uh, in their collaboration process and another thanks again to Ahmed and Robert of course to work uh, because we had the privilege to work with the very dedicated people that helped us to do that uh, and it was a lot of hard work but um, I think uh, it was it was really useful uh, to make the the peer assessment system work and the good thing is we also um, learned from that at Saxion uh, for our smart solution semester. Yeah, you can go to the last one. Yeah, uh, okay. For our uh, smart solution semester, we are using all the experience we had from Epic in this smart solution semester. How can we actually uh, do a peer assessment system to support our smart solution um, project? And there's a lot of things that people say, oh, this is difficult, that's hard, that's nearly impossible. And I think one of the main things we learned from Epic just don't say it's impossible. Uh, you will find a solution in the end. And things that seem impossible um, at the beginning uh, appear to be possible in the end. Uh, so for us, that served as an example for the development of the Smart Solution Semester. It also served as um, a good preparation for uh, actually for this whole Corona COVID-19 situation because uh, suddenly all students, also Saxion students that were not in EPIC, they all had to work online and they all had to um, work together in, in online groups and with online platforms. So I think that was a big advantage. Um, um, and uh, it was, yeah, the broad student participation uh, was very useful. Students from, uh, from textile engineering, students from mechanical engineering, students from um, uh, electrical engineering students from all kinds of uh, different courses working together also with all the different students in uh, in the other countries um, was very useful and oh, it was a very very enriching experience for the students I don't think we have uh, Saxion students on board here this afternoon but I can assure you that also for them and talking uh, to, to them in their final presentations that we had uh, a few weeks ago it was a very, very enriching, both interdisciplinary as well as uh, intercultural uh, experience. And uh, I want to thank everyone who enabled this uh, for us and uh, for our students. So thank you very much. Also, thank you very much, Matthäus. Thank you very much, Natasha. It was really good to 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 hear that. Like, uh, it was really nice. Yeah, the girls here uh, also from Brazil, they report widely that it was a very good collaboration with Saxion, uh, especially uh, the guys really connect. And that, that was really good indeed, because uh, they, they could communicate uh, in a very good way. And also, I would like to detach this point of the preparation for COVID-19, which, which was a real thing, real thing, uh, yeah, uh, because uh, we got used to online collaboration. It was really important indeed. It's an experience that can base uh, the future necessity right now. Thank you, Natasha. So right now, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Khaled to uh, say some words uh, and make a presentation on the collaboration. Khaled, can you hear me? Uh, do, would you like to share some slides or? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? 
Yes, now we can highlight. Thank you, Robert, yes. for. So, yes, I would like to share uh, my slides, please. Okay. Robert. Okay, Dr. Hallett. Perfect. Perfect, there it is. <clears throat> so, uh, hello everyone. Um, hope you are doing well. So, again, I introduce myself. So, this is uh, Khaled Junior Rahafayed. Uh, so I have a PhD in uh, software security uh, from uh, Ottawa University in Canada. From uh, Ottawa University. Um, I'm half Canadian, half Tunisian, and uh, so I visited Lake for more than 15 years in Canada, and now I'm back to Tunisia since two years, and um, I teach at Esprit Private School of Engineering. So today I'm going to give a short uh, speech about the internalization of higher education trans motivation models and especially the case study applied to ESPRI and the University of uh, Brasilia. Yeah, so first a quick introduction, then the drivers for, of the internalization of higher education, the motivations, and then a case study of ESPRI and University of Brasilia. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so let's first start by asking some questions. So, what do we mean by the internationalization of higher education? Uh, what is the internationalization of the student body? Internationalization of the faculty? Internationalization of the curriculum? And here we'll start with some facts. So, first. Some international activities do not serve the goal of internationalization. For example, here we can see that in some countries, uh, they propose a program of a country in another country just um, in a way that it's more uh, for commercial reasons and not necessarily to develop intercultural, uh, to, to, to promote uh, education. Uh, also, internationalization means greater international students' diversity and not necessarily increased international student recruitment. So the goal here is not necessarily to increase recruitment of international students in a given university, but more it's more about great international student diversity. Uh, reflection three, humans are naturally tribal. So bringing tribes together to reap the benefits of internationalization requires hard work. So here there is, I mean, there is, there should be some uh, willing uh, to, to, uh, to adapt uh, the, the, uh, or to implement and make sure the infrastructure is well prepared to uh, host uh, international students in any given university. Uh, for reflection four, universities are conservative. Embracing internationalization is usually uncomfortable. And here we take the case of the UK. For example, uh, we can see from this picture here where some uh, um, students, international students, had uh, some problems. Almost 20,000 students were told to leave the UK or refused entry, with 900 being held in detention. This is just an example of it. It could be happen. Uh, it could happen in any other country depending on the, the legal uh, aspect. So the drivers of the internationalization of higher education, first globalization. So here it could be for business, culture, uh, technology and social media, which plays a, a very important role in glo globalization. Air travel too, when uh, we have uh, air uh, uh, infrastructure, it helps countries to, uh, uh, to to it helps people and students and uh, teachers to reach uh, each other. Uh, English are the language of instruction, which is uh, compulsory usually, especially when we have countries for, uh, like uh, students and uh, teachers from uh, different countries who doesn't don't necessarily speak the same language. Uh, intercultural cooperation and leveraging diversity. 
Okay, so uh, here are some national government policies and, and internationalization. For example, in Malaysia, they have a, a program called Education Blueprint. In Japan, too, they have some program to reach more than three new uh, thousand, three hundred thousand new students. Uh, China uh, has a program of called Great Wall to reach more than five hundred thousand uh, students in the next 10 years. Korea also has a program called Korea Brain 2021, Russia too. So there are different policies and different national government policies and objectives, which is important to know because when we would like to make partnership, we have to deal with these uh, programs and we have to know exactly what programs offers and that what are the features of each program. So for the for motivation now, so the first one is developmental. Uh, commercial, for example, here we for the developmental where we develop uh, certain universities. There is uh, a Colombo plan as an example. Commercial, uh, for example, the case of the UK and Austria, their motivation for internationalization is more in uh, commercial. Uh, economic, for example, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, it's part of the economical cycle. Uh, diplomatic, uh, like for example, China. Uh, usually uh, is targeting new students uh, worldwide uh, for more diplomatic reasons. Uh, global positioning, for example, Russia, talent acquisition, for example, some universities like in the UK, like Imperial College and LGZ. Um, all the commercial to pedagogical, uh, we take the example of Nottingham Trent University. So now where does internationalization fit in? So in order to answer this question, first we have what we call international student mobility. So we have to make sure that uh, uh, the mobility, there is a kind of infrastructure that allows students to, to be able to move from a university to another. Then we have what we call international student recruitment. So there should be a program, clear program that defines how the recruitment is done. Uh, it could be some, uh, for example, in a, uh, in a way of, uh, exchange program or anything else uh, international student support and integration we have to have a way of integrating the new students and support them because usually international students they have usually different uh, needs and different requirements and it's not obvious for them to be integrated easily in a new country then we have globally connected research that's one of the example of our collaboration between tunisia and brasilia uh, tunis and brasilia uh, so the goal started, uh, the, the first uh, goal of the collaboration started with a globally connected research. So we wanted to make a research that uh, connect us globally and also with other uh, countries and universities. So from there we reached what we call internationalized curriculum. Here uh, we have in order for students to be able to move and to be to, to reach student international student mobility, we need to have a kind of standardized uh, curriculum so that students find uh, almost the same programs in different countries or at least with some international standards and then internationally oriented staff we need the staff or the administrations teachers all the staff working in the university they have to have uh, uh, a kind of uh, international uh, what we call intercultural and international intelligence in a way that they can handle the internationalization of university. Having all of this will lead us to have what we call uh, an international learning experience. So these are some examples here. So international students mobility, how many students? So mobility means that a student can move from a country to another, to an university to another, to, uh, to resume uh, education. So here, as we can see, we are reaching in 2012, we reached more than uh, 4.5 million students, okay? Based on following the, uh, the OECD education at the glance 2015. Here, uh, where do they study? So as we can see here, most of the countries, 19% of them are in the United States, 10% in the United Kingdom, 6% uh, are in Austria, 6% in France, 5% in Germany, and then we have many other countries here, and the 24% are non-OECD countries. Okay, so 
who are the market leaders now? Market leaders meaning that uh, students who actually became uh, at some point leaders based on their education. So here we have the highest number in Luxembourg, then Australia, United Kingdom, Switzerland, uh, Austria, New Zealand, and so on. Okay, so now I will talk about the case study of project-based learning project, okay? And especially the collaboration between Tunisia and Brazil. So the collaboration between Esprit and the University of Brasilia. So we had the plan, so we started by uh, making a plan, and then for sure there is some uh, reality, so we have to adjust, we had to adjust some things, we, have to, we had to deal with some uh, uh, challenges. Uh, so first I will give an overview about the journey, then what went well, so then what could be improved, and finally landscape of international higher education. So uh, we started the collaboration in June 2019 when we both uh, attended the PAEE uh, Ali 2019 in Tunisia, in Hamamet. It was in June 2019. Here you can see a picture of us. So uh, with Professor Joao, uh, Everaldo, uh, myself, uh, and other students and teachers. Um, here you can see the conference members, everyone who attended the conference. Uh, we had also some workshops uh, there. Um, so we started in June 2019. And then uh, during that summer, we started collaborating right away. So we started thinking about uh, creating a prototype for team building application in uh, project-based learning. And we had good results. Five students were involved in this project from Tunisia, from Esprit, and uh, Three, two or three students were involved uh, from uh, Brasilia, University uh, of Brasilia. And uh, that time, Professor Joao and, uh, um, and Mateos were involved in this project. So then, in December 2019, we started thinking about a possible partnership. So I traveled to, uh, to Brazil. So this is a picture when, uh, where uh, this is uh, Joao hosted me. Uh, in Brasilia, which are good, very good souvenirs, and my, pa my parents were there too with us. Uh, I visited the University of Brasilia. Uh, here we can see in the picture uh, Professor Joao, Professor Simoni, uh, uh, Matheus, <coughs> and other students. Um, I had the chance to give two workshops on uh, soft skills. So one was about uh, leadership and how to uh, reach uh, professional success. And the second one was about uh, the pitching technique and public uh, public speaking techniques, and we, it was a great experience. And we I, we had a very good interaction with the students there. And the, the workshops were were in uh, collaboration with uh, an organization, a non-profit organization in Brasilia. So then uh, in January 2020, so this was in Brasilia, so then when I came back to Tunisia, we started discussing how we can improve uh, work on the Puma project. And we started here discussing in January 2018, uh, 20, sorry, uh, the, uh, the Puma platform and how we can integrate some modules. And uh, we concluded that we will be starting uh, by developing two modules of the Puma um, the first one is called Team Building in PPL, which was uh, uh, earlier uh, introduced by the, the Tunisian team. And the second project is about self and peer assessment and PBL. So uh, what went well here? Uh, participants very were very generous with their times from both countries. To be honest, we didn't have any problem managing our times. Uh, despite the fact that uh, <clears throat> we had different time zones, uh, different uh, times, like we, uh, for example, in Tunisia, in Brazil, when it's morning, usually in Tunisia it's evening, so and so we have like four or five hours difference, and it wasn't easy to manage that, but we had a great experience with that. Regular meetings beca became uh, an habit, so we had we have had like regular meetings almost every week, uh, usually uh, every Wednesday. 
sometimes on Fridays. So we kept this uh, rate of meetings, which was, was very uh, important. Uh, the theoretical framework was well defined. So when I traveled to Brasilia, we well defined the framework, the approach, what we would like to reach, what are the models we'll be working on. We had at uh, Professor Joao's house, we had uh, an important meeting. Uh, where every where uh, Professor Simoni give, gave us a presentation on the Puma module uh, along with Everaldo, and then we discussed how we can work on it. Implications naturally emerged. So uh, from both sides, the implications and involvement was very natural. Uh, students' motivation naturally increased. So we have seen both students from both countries very motivated in order to. Uh, to reach the, the defined goals. <clears throat> we had some kind of horizontal cooperation in both sides, meaning that uh, there is no like uh, necessarily a, a, a hierarchy, hierarchy in terms of uh, vertical cooperation, but it was more about uh, a good atmosphere of collaboration altogether between both students and teachers. And finally, we had uh, intercultural awareness. So it's very important here to talk about this because uh, sometimes if we are we don't have uh, the minimum uh, intercultural awareness it's very hard to uh, to a be able to uh, to interact and to to reach a common goal so uh, from both sides we had uh, this intercultural collaboration which was a great experience um, so what could be improved or developed now uh, research access to participants uh, for example in Tunisia we had some problem accessing uh, uh, the research, for example, when I use it to teach, uh, when I was a professor at Ottawa University, we had uh, libraries, we had e-libraries, electronic libraries, and on-site libraries where we have access to any mat research material. In Tunisia, unfortunately, uh, with Esprit, it wasn't the case, so we had uh, some trouble uh, doing uh, research easily. Uh, defining the same objective for all involved students, that's also very important. For example, in Tunisia, the, this project, the two projects I, I presented, uh, which are uh, the self-assessment and uh, team building, were uh, part of uh, a project called um, uh, called uh, integrated project. When students have to use different technologies in order to work on a project, on a given project, and the time were different. So the project was supposed to be from uh, uh, from February to uh, June. Uh, while the other participants from uh, Brasilia, uh, they had other objectives, probably, for example, a master or uh, something else. So we didn't have exactly the same objectives, which was hard to implement at the beginning. But then once we defined the a common goal, we were able to reach it. Uh, so here it would be better if we define from the beginning a common goal, a common way of reach it, and especially a common goal also of uh, marking it. Legal aspect of the partnership. So uh, here sometimes there are some administrative uh, challenges. So especially in Tunisia we had some. So uh, this is something that we have to take into consideration. Involving students and teachers from both other, from other countries. So we had this experience between Tunisia and Brasilia, but I hopefully we could uh, enlarge it and expand it to other countries uh, from Europe, uh, Africa, from Asia, in order to reach a highest degree of diversity. Uh, achieving the partnership, which is our goal, uh, today's goal, actually. So these are things that we can develop or improve. So here, uh, what we can uh, do or uh, the collaboration, how we see the possible collaboration with you guys. So in five or six aspects, the first one is about Crandic technologies. So in Espri, uh, private school of engineering, we have uh, different uh, courses related to many new Crandic technologies. Uh, for example, this project was about web development, but we can also, uh, at any time, if you see uh, if you see that it's uh, interesting, we can also collaborate on Internet of Things, IoT, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. By the way, we are using artificial intelligence in both projects. Uh, that project that I presented earlier, uh, security, cybersecurity, blockchain, cryptography, augmented reality, 5G application. So these trending technologies and Esprit are very common and we can use them in any aspect of collaboration, future collaboration with Brasilia uh, and uh, the other partners. 
in uh, in Europe or uh, in America in America so education here we can also uh, work in education so here for example the two projects that proposed that we have been working on <laughs> are related to the education because they are part of the PBL or project based learning so we can also collaborate in this aspect team then personal development we can always work on this um, if you see interest it's you see that it's interesting we can also work on this professional development and entrepreneurship and intercultural awareness and finally post covid collaboration we can also uh, work on different aspects of post covid collaboration meaning that now there are big challenges related to uh, to covid 19 so it's interesting if we try to figure out how we can uh, make any kind of development uh, uh, within this uh, situation uh, so landscape of international higher education so here i'm presenting some of the the key international associations and conference that we could visit together probably to in order to improve this experience and in order to enlarge and expand our collaboration for example that is the EAI E European Association for International Education ACA or Academic Cooperation Association NAFSA North American Association for Foreign Study Advisors APAIE or Asian Pacific Association for International Education QS Apple, Asia Pacific Professional Leaders in Education, QS Maple Middle East and Africa Professional Leaders in Education, IEC Australian International Education Conference, uh, IIE Institute of International Education, and there are all many others. Or uh, there are some also key resources for research that we can use uh, and take advantage of, like uh, such as the. OECD Education at a Glance, UNESCO Institute for Statistics, Bridge Council, HESA or Higher Education Statistics Agency, which is located in the UK, uh, Institute of International Education in the US, OBHE Observatory on Borderless Higher Education, CBERT Cross Border Education Research Team. So thank you so much again. Uh, personally, I had a great experience with the uh, both teams from Tunisia and I would like also to thank so much uh, the Brazilian team Professor Joao, Professor uh, Simone, uh, also the students Everaldo, uh, Matheus, uh, you have done a great job and I'm looking forward to uh, more cooperation uh, and to make new partners as well and thank you so much again. Thank you so much, Halet. It was uh, really good. Actually, uh, all this is very important uh, for uh, international partnerships. And it was also good to hear the uh, reflections on the collaboration because it's always important, uh, the positive aspects, but also the constructive aspects are really interesting because uh, we can work on improving them. Really good. Thank you, Halet. Thank you. Mm. So, uh, right now, uh, I would like to uh, invite Professor João Melo to get to the virtual floor again. Professor João Melo, are you there? Yes, uh, just uh, don't, don't, I don't need any presentation, okay? I'm just yeah. saying that it was really nice to hear uh, all the professors uh, saying something and then saying that the thing is really going well and uh, without any at any time, I pass the, the, the word to João Evangelista from Central Bank yes. to present the, the, how uh, now being here in all these things, how uh, Central Bank can be in this uh, pro, in this project. Thank you very much, Professor. It is an honor to be with you here today, and it's a great pleasure to be in touch with so many people who are so involved in this project, which is really exciting and promising. In the Central Bank, we have been dealing with financial education for uh, different uh, target audiences, especially vulnerable people. When we speak of waste pickers, of course, many of you who are here today are interested in the technological aspects, but we know that the social aspects of, uh, of this work 
is really what, what counts the most. We're talking about people and people are our greatest concern. And in this sense, uh, we feel that, that we may be able to help somehow in the project with uh, the expertise we have gained along the past 17 years, since 2003, we have had a project on financial education for adults. And then in 2010, we started with the project on financial education for children and uh, youngsters at school. And uh, my special congratulations to the mobile financial education team. The app you have been creating seems to be really, really, really powerful with gamification in, in a very simple language. And I really enjoyed to hear that you have considered the fact that people are either illiterate or semi-illiterate. Actually, we have a high rate of semi-illiteracy in Brazil, and this is not only a reality in our country, but probably the same thing in several other countries. So in this sense, when we think of any solution to people who are underserved, uh, we should have in mind that they have difficulties in understanding messages and planning themselves. So um, in this sense, all I would like to do is to congratulate and say that we are not yet fully on board, but we are exploring possibilities to help and to be part of the project as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you, João. Uh, it was like, uh, it is really, really an honor to have you to have you here. And I think we definitely have a very high potential uh, to make a, a collaboration because it matches both the purposes of, uh, uh, of this international collaboration and also of the central bank to uh, develop solutions to help uh, trying uh, to solve uh, the problem of financial uh, like uh, the financial Ill illiteracy in Brazil yep so so uh, in the next uh, meetings and next weeks we're gonna definitely make progress on it and we we're gonna we're gonna be able to establish a cooperation line to uh, get this thing further thank you João so uh, I like to uh, uh, already thinking uh, João passing the word to professor Ana Flavia professor Ana Flavia are you there oh she is she's she just Hi. Yeah. So um, I was going to present a PowerPoint, but I don't think it's um, necessary. So I'm just going to speak very fast about uh, what the future holds. And um, first of all, congratulations, bravo for what you've done so far. Beautiful job. And talking about why local actions matter. Um, we have a team of four people, myself, Dr. Nils Zundergaard, uh, Dr. Marc-Antoine Diego Guidi from France, and a PhD candidate, Marcus Vinicius Isaias Mendes uh, from the University of Brasilia. And um, what I'd like to say is that uh, we are living in a world of growing inequalities and uh, theoretical concepts like the ecosystem vitality and environmental health matter. That's what you have in the PowerPoint presentation, if you want to check it out um, afterwards. And then why local uh, actions matter? Um, why do actions matter? Uh, for three main reasons. First of all, a matter of scale and impact. The fact that you are able to discuss among uh, young students from different countries, different realities, backgrounds and views on how do you see the world and the impact that you can cause, uh, especially uh, for people. Uh, That's the second point. People are not targets. People need to be seen, touched, heard. People need discussion. So it's very important that you go there to the Lichão, the Estrutural, or wherever you go. It's really important that you meet with people and you listen what they have to say. And the third point, um, usually global reports uh, are only read by people like you who had the chance to learn English and to go to university or to have access to 
very good education. So uh, you also need to be the translators of th this global data to people who really need them. And I think this is a very important point that you're bringing to discussion. And then I have a challenge for you. Why is Brazil underperforming? And just a one example from uh, the Yale University Environmental in Uh, did you also lose the audio? I... And uh, we cannot hear you. Uh, yeah, professor, you. Professor Anna, uh, we lost we lost your audio. I think. Yeah, let, let me call her. <laughs> I think we lost her. <laughs> Not only the audio. In the local. Um, projects can be uh, vulnerable to those risks. So I would uh, suggest that you invest on your projects and you take into account how can you connect all the risks and the local dimension with the global dimension that you are already doing. And that's what I had to say. So thank you so much, Matheus, Professor João. Professor Jens, it was very nice um, being part of this project with you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Uh, it is always really important to uh, like to have uh, the contact to uh, with you. This like sharing of a lot of great information because after all, you are the specialist uh, into this really important subject which is getting international because we have international problems we have global problems so we need global cooperation global coordination and also global action of course local action is uh, is the essence but we need global uh, coordination because we have global problems so thank you very much professor uh, right now uh, already apologizing for our <laughs> For, for the time, because uh, we got a little out of schedule, not exactly a little, we are half an hour right now, but I think it was very uh, interesting and productive. Uh, I now would like to invite uh, Professor Marcia, which is the coordinator of production engineering, to say the final words, and then we're going to finish the event. Professor Marcia, are you there? She's preparing. Yeah, she was here one minute ago. So I don't know. Let me see if she's here. I was. Who were you? Mateus, can you hear me? Oh, professor, now I can, now I can. Oh, that's really good. And can you see me also? No, I, I can't can see, you see you, me? but I can hear you. Can you see yes, me and, I, and can you hear me? Uh, no, uh, so far I can only hear you. I'm, go uh, I'm trying to. Professor Orna, one minute. Uh, I, just, I just would like to invite everyone uh, before that to activate the camera so we can take a picture. So uh, uh, while Professor Marcia uh, is talking, I would like to invite who can uh, to uh, share the camera. So Jens. I'm trying uh, to, but it, it's not working. I don't know what's happening. Oh my gosh, no problem, Maybe? Professor. Uh, yes. Can you I see will... me now? Can you see? Not yet, not yet. But don't worry. But no worries. I will take the picture and I will insert. You will send me your, your your print screen and then I will insert you in the in the in the picture and then I, I will send it. The, the I will send the final version. Okay. Thank you. So can I can I talk now? Can I say something? 
Yeah, yes, definitely. You can. I will uh, take the first picture right now in three, two, one, and. Perfect. And professor, you can you, you can say you can start. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so thank you everyone. My name is Marcelo Genzino. I'm also a teacher from the production engineering course at the University of Brasilia. And currently I'm also the coordinator of the course. I would like to thank you all on behalf of the University of Brazil and our course for your participation in this seminar. And I'm sure uh, the project we are planning to develop together, it's going to be a great experience for our students. I do like to thank you all and I wish you to be together for working together for a, this time. And I would like to thank you all for being part of the, this project. And and that's it. Thank you all, and I wish you a good evening. Thank you, Mateus. That's all. Thank you very much, Professor. So let's take a final picture because I'm receiving messages. Oh, I, I didn't, I couldn't appear. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So let's do this. So the final picture right now. And make, 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 make the sign we make town. We come to town, not on the tree, so people can. Okay. Yeah, ah, wait, wait, what, Professor? See me now. Count to three. Count to ten. Oh, perfect. I'm counting. Okay. Can you see me now? Okay. Anyway, Prof. Let's see, Professor Marcia. I still can't see you, Professor. But but don't no, worry. Finally. I will. Oh, I can see you now. I can see you now. Finally. Perfect. We're missing the Danish So we're going to do it. Uh, what? Ah, the Danish students. The Before, Danish students. Yeah, where is Roberto? Where is Peter? Surface Book versus Linux. It's not a good, uh, good combi for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I will, I will insert you artificially later. So in three, two. No, come to ten. Ten. What? Oh, ten, ten, nine, ten. eight, three, two, one, and one moment, and again in three, two, one, and perfect. That was wonderful. So. Thank you all very much. It was really good. And see you in the next opportunities. Thank you. On the 27th, then? On Thank the 27th. On the 27th. Thank you. Perfect. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, Matthias. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Brilliant. Bye.